Yeah, so uh, viewers, welcome, welcome to the DLF channel. And today we have a special guest from US, Dr. Eric Westman. So Dr. Eric Westman is not one of the common keto doctors or low carb doctors. He's been around for almost or around 20 years or exactly, I think, 21 years of keto experience. And he's a, he's a mainstream doctor, a mainstream doctor who has come across keto as you know, a solution to various modern chronic diseases. And he calls this as what is called as keto medicine. So uh, I'll just give a brief about Dr. Eric Westman. So Dr. Eric Westman is an associate professor of medicine at Duke's University. He is a board certified obesity medicine and internal medicine and founded at Duke Keto Medicine Clinic. And uh, he is a past president and master fellow of the Obesity Medicine Association and fellow of Obesity Society. He is the the editor of textbook Obesity Evaluation and Treatment Essentials and the author of, author of New York Times bestseller, The New Atkins for New You, Cholesterol Clarity, Keto Clarity. He is also the co-founder of Adapt Your Life, an education and product company based on raw carbohydrate concepts. So I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Eric Westman. So Dr. Westman, a brief about uh, D-Life. So D-Life is an online forum where there are a lot of uh, you know, uh, chronic diseases patients do come in and uh, uh, those who have diabetes, obesity, PCOS and it's the forum where people share their successes and we have around 500 paid members and I'm one of the volunteers there. I'm also a lifetime paid member and uh, we have around 1,200 recipes and more than 200 to 50 success stories and recently D-Life has also started what is called as low carbohydrate uh, nutrition diploma so this is something which people can take benefit. Now for viewers, before we proceed further, so this is a, a purely free and educational video. There are no financials involved. And secondly, this is not a medical advice. For any change in diet or any associated conditions, you should be in touch with a very good low carb nutritionist as well as a doctor who is going to support everything. So welcome Dr. Eric Westman and uh, well, doctor, I'm, you know, uh, uh, this is something, you know, uh, very heartening to know that you are practicing uh, keto medicine for the last 20 years or 20 years or more. So please do tell us how you came across uh, this particular, you know, keto medicine as a way of solution for all the chronic diseases. Yeah, doctor. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I, I was involved with the early research about low carb keto uh, diets. And so I got into this area because of research, not because of any uh, great success on my own part, uh, a problem of my own. In fact, I saw two of my patients when I was an internal medicine specialist do a similar diet and they fixed themselves, really, because the doctors didn't recommend it. And, and when I asked them what they did, it was something I'd never heard of. And so it was two patients who did what was known at the time as the Atkins diet. Uh, and uh, I was curious about it. And I asked one of my patients where he learned about it. He said he read this book uh, and the book, you know, medical, I'm a medical doctor. You, and you read a book and you had such success. So I was curious about it. And uh, I think if I saw it just once, I would have dismissed it and not followed up. But I saw two people who came to me right about the same time, and it was remarkable that they did this and they did it on their own. Uh, by the time the second gentleman came in, I had looked at the books and uh, I was concerned about the cholesterol. A lot of people today are still concerned about the cholesterol, but remember, for me, this is 22 years ago, okay? <laughs> so I said to my second patient, well, I'm worried about your cholesterol. And he looked at me and said, why don't you check it? And I thought, well, okay. I, I checked the cholesterol level and it was better. So not only had they done something that we didn't recommend, we thought was bad, the specific reason we thought it was bad didn't happen. <laughs> so I started talking to my other doctors and researchers and I'm in a very fertile research environment at Duke University. And they were saying, oh yeah, don't do that, it's bad, don't study this. But, uh, but I kept seeing 
these patients and they had these results. And so I contacted Dr. Atkins, who was the predominant clinical doctor at the time. Remember, this is 1998. And he uh, called me on the phone and we went back and forth and he invited me to his office in New York City. So I went from Durham to New York City, which is uh, just a one hour, one, one and one half hour plane flight. We sat in his office and the office of Jackie Eberstein, a nurse who I've still kept in touch with. Uh, Dr. Atkins died in 2003, uh, but I've been able to learn from Jackie throughout the years. Uh, but I went to the office there and it was working. It was, it was working, people were doing uh, uh, the keto. At that time, it was called Atkins induction or the first phase of Atkins. And it clearly was working, but that wasn't enough for me. I said, like any good researcher, I need to go back to my university and do some studies before I'll recommend this. So I, I asked Dr. Atkins for money for the first study. And so he actually, wrote a check for the first study. By the time our second study was done, they had created a foundation for research. And so our second study, which was a much more scientific one, published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2004. Remember, this is now you know, uh, 16 years ago for me. <laughs> I, I'm getting used to this now 16 years ago, doing research on it and seeing the amazing results uh, and um, through the years, we've done studies not only with weight loss, uh, but also diabetes. We've done studies with heartburn, which gets better. Uh, uh, GERD is the technical term. Polycystic ovary syndrome, a cause of infertility in women, gets better. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, uh, this kind of stomach issues is from carbohydrates. So that gets better too. Um, and uh, so now I have about 15 years of a clinic that we opened. And I estimate that we have treated eight to 10,000 people who are uh, many who are very ill. I, I work at a university. We have a, a, a um, wide range of medical problems that people come to the university for and I'll be the expert to help. For example, if someone needs to lose weight before they have a hip replacement or a knee replacement, or I'll be the one to help them lose weight before a heart transplant, for example, if they're too heavy for that. So not only do I have a comfort level with treating people, you know, just the weight loss, I can help people even if they have diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, they're on Coumadin, blood thinners, and also um, I've, I've really sort of um, come to believe uh, I treat pa my patients better than I ever have in my life. And the secret is I talk about food. So I don't take my prescription pad and give out pills and shots and I, I take them away now. So what I was taught, the medication treatment of all of these diseases is still what's being taught in the medical schools in the US, probably in India. And so by changing, changing the food, I get to take away those medications. It, it's really it, really phenomenal. Now, I, I'm a teacher. I, I teach not only my patients. I got involved with a national organization in the US called the Obesity Medicine Association. I'm a past president there. I have taught the keto diet at the Obesity Medicine Association for years. And now I'm you know, teaching other doctors how to do this. And it's a thrill to see other doctors who are you know, depressed, disillusioned, actually become alive again, helping their patients get better by changing the food. <laughs> it, it seems strange. And even one of my, my friends said, well, you cheat. Said, well, what do I mean? I cheat. He said, well, you talk about food. I said, well, because the, most doctors are not taught about how powerful changing the food can be. So that's my story. I got into this through watching a few of my patients do it, you know, against my desire, really, but then followed the data through the years and watched as 
the data um, were replicated all around the world. In fact, now there are studies of studies called meta-analyses. So that we, the hard, hard uh, thing now is to summarize all of the data that's available. There's, there's so much now about it. In fact, one of my teachers, Steve Finney, who is involved with Virta Health, a company in the US, uh, says there are, uh, there are more studies about the low carb keto diet than any diet because everyone thought it was bad and everyone had to show that it was bad, but they found out that it was good. <laughs> so, so when someone says, where's the data, it's now become a, it's a hard time showing all the data. It, it takes a lot of time uh, uh, to transmit that information. So, so I'm quite comfortable with low carb diets, keto diets, LCHF. Um, these are all, I would say, uh, variations on a theme of keeping the carbohydrates very low. In fact, in the research uh, papers, we call it carbohydrate restriction, keeping carbohydrates restricted in the diet. TCR or therapeutic carbohydrate restriction. So uh, yeah, uh, in I think in D-Life also, we do have experience of you know uh, having carbohydrate from let us say 20, 30 grams to upwards even 100, 120, depending upon various stages, I mean, depending upon the various metabolic damage uh, which anyone will have. So uh, uh, it's very heartening to know, doctor, that you know, with almost eight to ten thousand patients, we actually uh, uh, treated on you know, a carbohydrate restricted uh, diet, and that too very successfully. And the various kind of you know uh, advanced stages also, like maybe heart transplant, as you say, you know, uh, not to think of diabetes and obesity, which is which I'll say is comparatively simpler. Now, how different is you know uh, the 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 keto, keto diet which you recommend compared to, you know, out there, there's a lot of confusion. We don't know what is what. Uh, someone will say 20 gram, 30 gram. Someone will say net, net carb. So there are a lot of confusion around. So what is your typical, you know, way of recommending or your typical style? Yes, my approach is kind of the classic older way of, of doing a keto diet where all you do is change the food. You don't add in ketones or oils or MCT or ghee or butter, you don't need that. If someone's trying to lose weight, if someone's trying to fix diabetes, you want the ketones to come from your body fat, not from what you eat or drink. So the approach I use goes back to 1860. 18, in the okay. 1860s, William Banting in England wrote a treatise on corpulence and I um, adapted it to the modern foods, but I don't add in all of these products. And, and um, so we use a simple approach. Probably the most uh, important thing that I've found is, uh, remember my perspective is people come to me, often they've tried many, many other things and, and the other doctors send their patients to me. They want what I do to work the first time, every time. Like, like a prescription drug. They, they wanna be sure that what I do will work. And, and so that's where our approach is to keep the carb, total carbs under 20 grams for the whole day. And it's, it's, it's very strict compared to other methods. But remember, I need to have it work every time, first time too. <laughs> so um, that's where we have the 20 gram uh, rule or, or limit. Uh, other clinical programs in the U.S. have used 30 grams as a limit. It seems to do very well. Uh, the 20 to 30, so there's some wiggle room in there. And, and as you mentioned, if you're young, you're active, you might be able to have up to 50 grams total per day. And if you're someone who has good metabolism, you, you exercise, you're, you're a cyclist, you, you run marathons, you probably could have up to 150 grams of carbs a day, as long as it's healthy sources of nutrition. I mean, you always want to eat real food just as much as you can, not products and, and oils and that you wouldn't find naturally in cooking. Uh, so, uh, so we have a very strict method, but it's very effective too. So that means you don't recommend this typical, you know, bulletproof coffee, uh, adding a lot of heavy cream, fat. I think you have made it very simple. What you say is just real food and uh, uh, whatever fat you recommend is, I think just adequate for cooking. 
and uh, you know uh, not uh, shoving you know bucket full of fats on uh, something so uh, right so the fat that comes with the proteins naturally yeah. is going to be enough uh, and i find that um, many of these newer ideas the bulletproof coffee the, the fat bombs the yeah. other sorts of things these were never in our studies in fact i can't find a weight loss study or a diabetes study that used bulletproof coffee so really it hasn't been studied and there's a very com common thing today where people drink apple cider vinegar or this and no there are no studies about this <laughs> so that's another criteria that i have i want to make sure that something has been studied not only so that it works, but that it doesn't have side effects. And so I'm finding that a lot of people will have side effects, but it's not from the food, it's from these other things that they're having. And so one of my jobs today in my clinic at Duke is to take away those things that cause side effects. Uh, and I can just sort of say, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I've never heard of this before. I'm suspecting it's that new product or the new, uh, fad of the moment uh, where you add oils and all of these things. Um, there's even a product where you can drink ketones uh, yeah. and um, no studies, no studies in terms of weight loss or, or even um, uh, I will not require randomized trials all the time. I'm a clinical doctor. And if let's say 10 or 20 of my patients whom I know very well, not, not internet patients, they're, they're ones in my office. If they start using something and it looks like many, many people can do it and it's fine, then I'll say, okay, I'll introduce that as an option. Uh, but I'll always say, I won't guarantee that it, this will work. <laughs> I will guarantee this list of foods that I've studied will work. But if you add in these other things because you want to uh, for, for enjoyment or pleasure, then you just have to try it and see. So there still is a lot of trial and error, as we say, you know, you try it and see if it works. Uh, if, you, if you go beyond what we study uh, and, um, but the 20 gram and then avoiding extra fats is probably the, the secret or what's different of what we do compared to what other people teach. In fact, in certain blogs I've read, you know, people are, you know, people are still disturbed. They go to various coaches and that coaches recommends, you know, I read an incident where, you know, a lady, she's obese and that coach told her to take vegetables throughout the day and then two bulletproof coffee, one in the morning, one in the night. So, you know, we find that, you know, it is very funny that, you know, they are not going to respond. Sheer frustration, two, three months, no response. That's what she has written in that blog or in some, in some forum or some group. And uh, highly protein deficient, she might lose some lean body mass. So yeah. that's why for viewers, you know, we say that, you know, you'll have to uh, consult an adequately, a properly trained low carb nutritionist who will understand all the macros properly. And there is no need to, you know, really consume all these fat bombs and all. So we just yeah. stick to real food is something which Dr. Eric Westman recommends. So Dr. Westman, since you have been here for, you know, uh, in this keto space for 20 years, you know, how, you know, this question typically comes, it is not safe in long term. Why do people say this, you know, it is not safe in long term. There are no long term <laughs> studies. So <laughs> this I is something which is... Probably two main reasons. One is we use the term ketosis. And that has a good and a bad side to it. So doctors and nurses and dietitians are all trained to hear ketosis is bad. So they will automatically, they will automatically assume it's ketoacidosis. It's not ketoacidosis, it's ketosis. <laughs> but, but there's not a whole lot of textbooks that talk about it. Uh, although Prof Noakes in Cape Town, South Africa, Timothy Noakes is assembling a big textbook. Uh, yeah. I'm contributing some chapters to it. Uh, so I think the fear of the ketosis and then just, um, Fear of the unknown. If you haven't been taught about this as a medical person, we're taught to be skeptical and think that it's bad until we've been taught about it. So, so that's the strange thing that we're more comfortable with prescribing 
medicines for diabetes and insulin and all these things that, that can make the blood sugar go low and can actually have very serious consequences. I'm, as a doctor, I'm more comfortable doing that than just telling someone not to eat sugar or to have ketosis. <laughs> Again, it, you know, I use that as, as irony or as kind of a, it's a, the reality is that just changing the food is a lot safer than using insulin or other drugs. It's just that the doctors haven't been taught. And, uh, and I remember talking to some researchers through the years where they said, well, well, Dr. Westman or Eric, I knew several of them. They said, well, if you go lower on the carbohydrates, what will we, will we do? We can't increase the fat anymore. So in the medical world and in the research world, they wouldn't study high fat diets. And because there was this feeling that it was bad and, and if you eat fat, it's going to clog your arteries and all this. And it just hasn't come true. So after 20 years, I, I hear the same criticisms that I heard 22 years ago without any evidence about the criticism. So I'm now writing and I'm a guest editor for a few journals uh, just started this year. And my first editorial that I wrote in October of this year, October, 2020, I wrote, you know, the burden of proof uh, it, it's up to the, the other people who are critical about this diet to prove that it's bad because there's so much information about how good it is uh, and how therapeutic it can be. And it, but that's the kind of the burden of the new person on the block is that you have to prove that it's good. Well, we have. So now if you say it's bad, you have to prove that it's bad. I mean, you, not you personally, but researchers and organizations and and uh, so it's been interesting to see that uh, progress through the years. And, you know, there will always be some people who say it's bad, not, not because of the science, but because of the religious or social or ethical uh, reasons. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't want other people to eat meat. And so that, uh, I learned that from Gary Fetke's wife, Belinda Fetke. She uh, unearthed all of this information about even the American Dietetic Association was started by a religious group that didn't want people to eat meat. So there, that has been put into the mainstream way of thinking without the science, it was more a, a belief and religious uh, beginning. So uh, uh, Dr. Do you see any, any adverse effect in the initial phase? I mean because we keep hearing a lot that, you know, the lay press, they will say there's a lot of adverse effect. So what are the adver kind of adverse effect do you see in the initial phase? Well, I want to just repeat what you said, which is if you're on medications, the medications can become too strong very fast. So if you don't know what the medicines do, please do this change with supervision with someone who knows uh, I can see a side effect of a medicine on the first day of the diet. So be very careful. Now, if someone's not on medications, um, there is something called keto adaptation. It means you're adapting toward a keto diet. And you might notice headache. You might notice you're tired, some fatigue. Uh, so what we recommend is that don't try to exercise a lot the first couple of weeks. Give yourself a break. Uh, and if you don't have a salt sensitive condition like high blood pressure or heart failure or, or kidney failure would be another one if you're on dialysis, um, add some salt and that will reduce your chances of getting the keto adaptation or, or keto flu as it's called, uh, but it's not like a flu. In fact, most people don't get keto flu. I estimate um, about a third of people will have keto side effects that keto flu early on. Um, and I estimate that and not by the science, uh, actually I was able to go around the US uh, on Saturdays. So I worked during Monday through Friday at Duke University. So I would fly to different places around the US and there were at one time there were 400 people in the auditorium. And I asked how many of you have done the keto diet and just about all hands go up. So 400 people, the sample size, and then I'll say, how many of you had keto flu? And then, you know, about a third of people. 
So most people don't get it. <laughs> and so it shouldn't be a reason to not try. Um, and um, of course, cravings is another issue. Cravings can occur. That's really not a keto adaptation side effect. And thankfully, the cravings usually go away, away after a day or two. Uh, although some people will crave, uh, you know, the rest of their life or, or during a holiday season, you'll crave the food you used to have over the holiday. That's just natural on any kind of program. Um, but the keto side effects early on, those are the main ones. Uh, they're, they're relatively minor when we think of like drug side effects, meaning, you know, very low blood sugar and passing out, that sort of thing. Um, now, um, there are some special considerations if you have medical problems, which means you want to just be sure uh, uh, to follow with someone who understands these. You know, if you had, um, these are kind of general dietary principles that still apply to a keto setting, which is, you know, sodium or salt restriction, if you have to restrict salt, um, and uh, lots and lots of fluids, if you have a history of kidney stones, for example, um, you have a history of gout, you might get a flare early on, but you, what you want to do is just treat it and have the, the symptoms will go away. And then you see it's the underlying metabolic problems that cause the gout. So uh, these are uh, reasons why a clinic like mine will still you know, exist and, and why we need trained medical people to understand this and communicate it um, in a uh, non-judgmental way unbiased way so i think keto flu is something which even i never under i never got it you know when 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 i also shifted from whatever the usual diet we are taking to low carb diet so it's something which i never came across but somehow we keep reading all this in you know uh, various newspapers and magazines and everything and people might discuss so the other thing is you know people say that this is not a sustainable diet you cannot do it for long term so personally, I've been doing it for now almost five years. So how is your experience? How many of your patients have been doing it for more than a decade? Well, so I've been doing it about 22 years myself. Wow. And my teachers have done it, you know, I hate to say how many years because it will give away their ages. <laughs> but certainly you can sustain this. Uh, we did a survey some years ago of, of the grassroots movement of how many of lots of people who were doing it and how long they've done it, and um, I, you know, it, it, it's easier now to do it and not be told don't do it by a medical person. I have to think that that was one of the reasons why it, it wasn't sustainable because you'd go to a doctor and the doctor would say that's unhealthy, and so people would say, oh, I tried it six months and I couldn't stay with well because the doctor told you that you shouldn't do it <laughs> so that's easing those those, those you know should and shouldn't are, are fading away um and in in my clinical so so the, you have to understand there's a difference between people finding this on their own doing it on their own who have all of the resources to figure out what to do they you know there's no question you can do this for decades of course you can now, if you, um, uh, and, and it's safe to do it like this, as long as you're eating real foods, not, you know, just drinking oils all day long, <laughs> you need protein. So the main nutritional principle is protein comes first. Um, now, people in my clinical setting, uh, so those with diabetes, uh, I have some people who have four, so have 200 kilos to lose in my office. You know, they have a long journey to go back, um, I suspect as we get into this, we'll find out that most of my patients have sugar addiction. It's a, um, a most people who develop diabetes have trouble giving up sugar because they're addicted to sugar. <laughs> so in my experience, about half of my patients will be able to stay on it for a year. Okay. You have to realize that they're coming to me with all sorts of medical issues and, and, and my support system is actually pretty minimal. I, I have an office and a clinic. I don't have uh, 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 paid support groups in my office. So I think these are really important. And we've actually developed a paid support group 
outside my clinic now and we have Facebook groups that people can join and these are so helpful and it can help people sustain it uh, much uh, at a larger percentage than what I see in my office. I think that is the that is the strength of groups. I mean, uh, that's what we say in D life also. So people who join, we encourage them to, once they resolve all their issues, we encourage them to please keep logging in, please keep reading. There are a lot of updates. You know, we keep motivating each other. So I think we require a motivational group. So your Facebook group actually does that. People share their dishes, whatever they have, they share their experiences. I think that motivates people to stay on track rather than you know get off on track. So which is very easy for you know for many people to fall. So uh, please tell us which are the various kind of conditions, medical conditions you actually treated with your keto medicine. Yeah, so just changing the food, understanding lower carb and the lower on the carbs you go, you have ketones in your body and that's what defines a keto diet. Um, you don't have to drink keto and all that stuff. <laughs> um, so the studies we've done um, that demonstrate, so they're, they're published studies, uh, uh, the, the keto diet is excellent for weight loss. Uh, it's excellent for diabetes prevention and treatment. And in fact, diabetes reversal. And uh, the fascinating thing is that if diabetes is causing kidney trouble, and the diabetes is fixed, the kidney trouble can be fixed as well. So we see the diabetes complications can be reversed. So even the, the numbness and tingling in the feet that happen with diabetes with so many people can be reversed. Um, this other studies we've done include um, the treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome or uh, infertility. Uh, the problem of less serious, but still very common, is heartburn um, goes away. Irritable bowel syndrome goes away. Um, and other studies have been done by other people uh, looking at seizures. Uh, there's a related type of diet called the ketogenic diet for seizures. And it's been used for childhood epilepsy now for over a hundred years. Um, it's not the same as what we teach, but it's, it's kind of like a variation on a theme, if you will. Um, so the uh, fascinating thing now that we have research and we have a lot of people uh, trying this and they, they get better, we're finding diseases that were not able to be treated or fixed before are being fixed. Uh, for example, there's a glycogen storage disease called McArdle disease. And I know it's a, a complicated thing to explain, but basically doctors thought for the last 50 years that these people had to have carbs. And the people themselves with the disease stopped having the carbs and they got better. They created a Facebook group and a survey and, and now they're going to teach the academic researchers of this disease what they've learned. And so it was, again, these, the grassroots people here who are doing it, teaching the academic university people about what's working for them. Um, another area that uh, I don't have randomized trials on, but we did a survey is type one diabetes. There's a group of people with type one diabetes doing keto on Facebook, and we surveyed their results and, and published it in a medical journal actually. And so one of the things I do on the side, so to speak, is, is uh, I help people publish results of novel or new findings of the, what the diet can do. And remember in the big picture view, a keto diet has you burning fat as your primary fuel. So you burn what you eat. If you eat carbs, sugar and starch, you're gonna burn carbs for your fuel. When you don't eat sugar and starch for your fuel, you're going to be burning fat. And that's the, the uh, healing therapeutic process of a keto diet is that you're burning fat and you have ketones that are anti-inflammatory. Um, uh, down the road, like uh, these are, um, the theory is there or there are animal studies there. Uh, the keto diet might help 
for Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and cancer, but I don't recommend or, or guarantee that in my clinic yet. Um, I'll say that these are possible or theoretical things that might improve and I'll, and I'll teach you how to do a keto diet, but I won't guarantee that it's gonna improve those conditions yet because we don't have human studies yet. And that's a, a level of uh, a, a level of evidence or, or bar or a criteria that I require before I'll recommend something. Uh, I want to see it being done in people and as many people as possible. <laughs> I think clinical experience plus, you know, you are also very strongly on this evidence-based medicine. You also believe yeah. in studies uh, since there are already a lot of studies and probably you will treat certain condition only if there are you know, more studies uh, to support probably. So maybe good. Oh, we, we find it very interesting that, you know, one of the biggest modern chronic disease we find which gets resolved is diabetes, of course. So we have, I think, across the world, people getting off insulin. You know, uh, my own, my, my cousin also reversed this uh, increasing microalbuminuria uh, by following a keto diet. And he got off 80 units of insulin a day. He's just now on metformin twice a day. So similarly, you know, uh, Yours truly, even me. So I don't. I took metformin for a couple of years. Last three years, I don't take any metformin. So my HbA1c range is anywhere between 4.7 to 5, 5.1 max. So this is how it varies. So even I've been able to overcome many things: uh, central obesity, fatty liver, and a lot of bone and joint issue like uh, uh, osteoarthritis, tendinitis, and frozen wrist, frozen shoulder. These are things which got resolved you know, once I. Came into this I, carbohydrate. I forgot to mention our paper on fatty liver. We did yeah. a paper, a study on that too, with, with liver biopsies as the, the uh, outcome. So uh, um, <laughs> uh, there's so many things get better, that's right. And um, there's a, a saying that I said some years ago that diet doctor, I, I really like diet doctor, the site, and I know Dr. Ianfeld, Andreas Ianfeld, pretty well. Um, uh, he said, you know, Dr. Westman said, it's so unbelievable, people don't believe it. I mean, really, it, it gets to the point of, well, it's too good to be true. No, it is true. Or, or, you know, the saying is, if it seems too good to be true, it must be too good to be, no, this is real. <laughs> and, uh, and yet the doctors who haven't been trained in it or see it won't um, understand it. They, I hope there's more of a, a tolerance for it in your country. There is in the US now, more organizations have signed off saying it's okay to do. They might not say do it, you know, and everyone, but they're at least tolerating it, which is a huge change. I mean, um, for a long time, it was only the Obesity Medicine Association that had a recommendation, sure, this is fine. But now the uh, Diabetes Association, American Diabetes Association, has recommended it. Uh, other organizations are, are coming around, um, and uh, but and, you know you don't need everyone to approve it. That's the other thing. That would be like saying to um, one car manufacturer that you have to prove to the other car manufacturer that your car is better, or you know. So there's a a, a certain salesmanship of different approaches that you're never going to get the the vegetarian doctor in the U.S to say that a meat-based diet is going to be okay. You never will, because it's not a um, scientific question, it's more of a, a salesmanship of what we're talking about. So, uh, as you say, you know, uh, in our country, it is yet to actually catch up as far as the mainstream is concerned, but it is getting popular among the, uh, the public in general. So people are getting convinced and there are a lot of people who want to get away from medication, they want to resolve obesity. So obesity and uh, diabetes and maybe some PCOS conditions. So these are the ones which are very popular as of now. And people are people are taking health in their own hands. So they are you know, uh, approaching uh, who are, are trained on low carb nutrition. And, uh, you know, that made me um, just think, remember if, if a doctor tells you, here, take metformin, and I see this um, so commonly. Um, what you can say is, well, I'm actually not going to use medicine. I'm going to use lifestyle change. 
to fix this. Because a keto diet, it's 10 times more powerful than metformin. <laughs> you know, it's so, but doctors are trained in giving them pills for things or shots or, or giving something. And, and many people have been accustomed to receiving that prescription or receiving the pill. And that's where you're right. This is grassroots. This is taking it into your own hands. And, uh, and you know, when someone says, we need to treat your cholesterol level with this pill, say, no, no, I'm treating my cholesterol level by changing my lifestyle. So you're doing something to change the cholesterol level and improve it. It's just not a pill. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's like swimming upstream, so to say, you know, or against the, the wind of the tidal wave of, of drugs that doctors have. But, but it's so powerful and, and it has the potential to help so many people. Uh, so as I say, you know, uh, we, this is an option available to people. So it is not that uh, this is the only thing or you know, uh, medicine is the only way, no. So there's an option. Those who are willing to change their lifestyle, those who are willing to change their food. So there's a very rock solid option which is available. So they can come off their medication, they can resolve obesity. And there are various other emerging conditions you know, where it has therapeutic application or potential therapeutic application like a lot of neurological conditions and you know as you had just mentioned uh, we find that now a lot of professional medical organizations are now recommending low carb keto as one of the option like ADA 2019 2020 and probably even in the 2021 recommendation so they have LCD low carbohydrate diet and BLCD very low carbohydrate diet as one of the options one of the nutrition options for the patients so it is always there it is just that many of us may not be aware that that option is there. So you recently, 2020, Diabetes Canada has also uh, offered low CHO and very low CHO diet, which is low carbohydrate, very low carbohydrate diet as a part of a nutrition therapy for the patients. I was also surprised few times, few I mean, a few days back uh, when I think uh, uh, Belinda Fetke has actually tweeted that Diabetes Australia, you know, they also have you know, in one of the recommendations, they have mentioned low carbohydrate diet as an option. So, you know, these things are there. And as you rightly say, Obesity Medicine Association, US. So, they also have ketogenic diet specifically mentioned as one of the options available. So, as far as I know, there are now four professional organizations who actually have a carbohydrate restricted diet as one of the options for the patients. So, I think this option should be given to patients ideally by you know uh, by all those who treat these conditions so that's how it goes so now what i wanted to ask you is you know how do you see you know how do you see india from this uh, from this particular perspective because um, to give you a background of course uh, everyone knows that this is a diabetes capital of india and everything or the world and everything but our diet is primarily high carbohydrate and uh, very very low protein most of the population are protein deficient. Maybe we must be getting just around 30 grams or so. Uh, it is not even touching the 0.8 gram, which is required. And uh, probably we are now shifted more to bad fats from all those refined seed oils and everything. So probably some of the snacks and all which is available, maybe uh, high refined carbohydrate and deep fried in oil. So this is, I'm talking only of the Indian food. Now I'm not talking about the Western junk food which has come. So that is a different issue totally. Our own Therapeutic, our own local cuisine itself is an issue, uh, which has now turned out to be uh, having those deep fried snacks, like some of the local savouries, plus this pasta, pizza, pasta, burgers, coke, influx again. So well, how do you see this, you know, the, the potential of low carbohydrate in India? Well, I think there's great potential and the, you have to keep in mind the science says don't eat things that raise the blood sugar very much. So you, what you're trying to do is minimize the impact of your food on the blood sugar and the insulin. Those are, those are the things that create the downstream bad effects of diabetes, of heart disease. So the first view would be to, the first pass would be never drink anything with sugar. You, you, wanna, you don't want, well, because when you drink something with sugar, that goes right into your blood sugar. <laughs> so the next step would be to don't eat lots of things with sugar. So drinking and eating sugar, pure sugar, like the candies, the things like that are, are the worst. Um, and 
I know it took me, it took me 10 years to give up the, the sugar. We have these um, things called jelly beans, which is just pure little sugar bombs. And, and, and I know it's not easy to do that, but, but your health will improve, your diabetes will improve. And um, that's kind of a relatively easy thing to do. Uh, your health might get better just by getting rid of the sugar in the diet. Now the, the advanced course though is the starches, the, the bread, the pasta, the rice, the fruit. These all get digested to sugar. And so the amount of those you have matters as well. So, but if you can limit that or space it out, or this is where it's interesting. If, if you're living in an area where there's not much food at all, like everyone is, is, is very skinny, uh, they're not, the, the, you can eat and, and, and drink and burn sugar because you're not going to store any extra calories because you don't have them. But when, it, when an area becomes more affluent, when food becomes cheaper, and uh, then if it is a carbohydrate-based diet, you're going to be quickly getting diabetes because these are the foods that raise the blood sugar. So you want to focus on protein. Proteins and fats don't raise the blood sugar much. Uh, and uh, so eggs and, and dairy are an excellent source of protein without a whole lot of sugar. Um, and then there are certainly vegetarian approaches. I, I, I teach a sort of meatitarian approach just because it's simpler. I, I don't have, you, know, you can have as much uh, meat as you want without worrying about the carbs because there are no carbs. But I know uh, if you are vegetarian, you can do a keto diet. Uh, you just have to be careful to not have a whole lot of the foods that have lots of carbs in them. So the rice and bread and, uh, and certainly sweets, uh, uh, jams and things like that, are, you got to stay away from those. So I think, you know, that is where, you know, uh, uh, that is how we tailor make it for India. So we are all vegetarians here. So, but as a vegetarian, we take dairy. So for our viewers, you know, uh, we can take a lot of non-starchy vegetables, some nuts and maybe uh, dairy foods like uh, paneer, paneer, which is nothing but Indian cottage cheese and maybe hung curd, hung curd or yogurt as you call, or a strained yogurt. So that's how, you know, we just strain off the uh, auto lactose is there. And that yogurt can be used, which is you know uh, rich in protein and fat, and very very low in carbohydrate. Uh, I know it, probably in your approach, you must be appro you must be recommending these things very less. But however, you know uh, these are the things which are available for India. And those who can eat eggs, yes, it's a very easy option and probably one of the ideal foods and very very cheap. In India, it is available for only rupees five or so, which is dirt cheap, one of the cheapest food available which people can easily afford one of the nutrient rich and dense food so probably that's how they can do so uh, you also say that you know uh, this low carbohydrate or restricted diet can be you know suitable for india also so that's how you know Absolutely. And, yes. yes and that is the experience in d life also so that's why you know uh, in this forum uh, we have a lot of uh, you know, a lot of indian dishes are available you know, you'll be interested to know that you know people here love what is called as rotis or you know unleavened breads, so made with wheat. So we have those options, you know, uh, maybe uh, keto roti or low carb roti, which is made from almond flour or coconut flour. So that's how you know. so these are the options available. Not this would not be specific and exact to how you recommend, but you know, a small modification is that is the best we can do in India. So please also do tell us about you know your uh, your your course, which the master class, you know, uh, which you offer. Keto made simple and uh, adapt to your life. So but just tell us something about, tell the viewers something about it. Yeah, so we have several offshoots of the program uh, now. The Adapt Your Life company. So adaptyourlife.com, A-D-A-P-T-Y-O-U-R-L-I-F-E, all one word, now has uh, not only some products for sale, but also an academy. So Adapt Your Life Academy, Dot com is offering courses so that you can learn the keto simple way of doing things. It's a course that I developed with Adapt Your Life and I give videos in the course. Uh, that's available online 
uh, and worldwide. Um, the other offering we have now is a book, actually. It's available on Kindle and in um, hard copy called End Your Carb Confusion. <laughs> so today everyone's confused about keto and all that. So the title is let's get rid of all the confusion End Your Carb Confusion. And in this book, we do introduce keto approach. We don't call it that, but it's there. And also higher carb levels so that this will help you figure out what carb level you should be in. And yes, we do say it's okay for some people to eat more carbs. You know, this is like one of my brothers could eat. He still does. He eats fruit and, and all these things that I don't or I don't, I can't. He still maintains a very healthy life. Uh, so there are metabolic differences that we all have. And this book may help you or help your loved one, uh, you know, even someone who might not ever think of doing keto and your carb confusion will introduce the idea that sugar is raising the blood sugar. It's the bad guy, not fat in the food. Uh, it's sugar that we want to limit uh, as best we can. So adapt your life academy.com. You can sign up, get on a newsletter, get some free information. Uh, we have uh, videos that we're doing, live events uh, inside uh, Facebook groups that you may be able to get access to. Uh, but um, yeah, this year, we, you know, we, we couldn't travel around like we did in 2018, 2019 for the ADAPT events. Uh, so we decided to create a digital class instead to still have outreach of our program. So uh, uh, I think that's a, that's a very good program. And uh, in fact, your book, End Your Carb Confusion, you know, uh, even I bought it from Kindle uh, just to go through. I'm yet to go through, I'm yet to read this, but let me tell you that it is very, very, very low priced. It is available only for rupees 499, which is very affordable at 500 rupees, less than 500 rupees is something which most of us can very easily afford. So I suggest viewers, you know, you can uh, you can get this book, uh, get the Kindle version and uh, very easily read it in your mobile or iPad uh, at your convenience. So, so Eric, Dr. Westman, so it was very, very interesting and, you know, uh, uh, it's really heartening and, you know, uh, a thrill for us to, you know, have you in the DLF channel, someone who's been treating his patients for more than two decades. And uh, your concepts are very strong, of course. Uh, you, you say that primarily you source protein food and the fat which comes to it, keep the carbs very low. So there is no confusion between net carb and uh, total carb, no. You recommend a very strict 20 gram gross carb or total carb, that's all. So there's no more counting net and something. And this is something which is going to give uh, someone who follows this a sure fire result. So that is what you are hitting. So as you always say, this is a prescription strength diet, you know, <laughs> which you recommend. So. Exactly. So I recommend viewers, you know, you can uh, you can uh, get in touch with Dr. Westman uh, uh, through his various websites, his Facebook, and uh, get his book to read. And I invite everyone to have a look at uh, DLF channel also, and also have a look at one of the latest course which it offers, Diploma in Low Carb Nutrition. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Westman. Thank you for accepting the invitation and, you know, uh, clearing this confusion uh, to the Indians. So let me end by saying that this is, you know, this will really end the carb confusion for all of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.